Insurance is the biggest scam to date and not enough people talk about it. You're getting scammed, I'm getting scammed, we're all getting scammed. Hi there, welcome back to the channel. So ever since I started running about financial literacy, there is something I always heard. You should invest in assets and you should not invest in liabilities, right? And a car is not an asset. A car is a liability and you shouldn't invest in it unless you have to. I feel like that statement, we can twist it and say a car is is a liability and you shouldn't invest in it unless you are American. You know why? Because I feel like in many countries people have a choice because they have a nice, good, efficient uh, public transport so they can choose to either buy a car or just to use public transport. But in the United States, it doesn't matter if you want it or not, you need a car. And of course, cars being liabilities, they come with so many expenses. And one of those expenses is the car insurance. You need to have insurance. But as we talked before, insurances are scams. And we talked about health insurance, how people are not happy about how scammy they are. But car insurances are also not different. And today we are going to listen to people ranting about how scammy the car insurance companies can be. And stick around. I will be back in a second to tell you what I think about it. So let's listen to what people are going through. Insurance is the biggest scam to date and not enough people talk about it. You're getting scammed. I'm getting scammed. We're all getting scammed. Because let me explain this quick story to y'all and y'all tell me what you think. We pay all this money for car insurance every single month. Hundreds of dollars have perfect history, whatever. Um, stuff happens to the car where it leaves a little bit of dings. I live in Texas on the highway. There's rocks flying all the time. So it's really not that taboo. You call the insurance, you file a claim. The claim counts against you. So you know what that means? Insurance payment goes up. Wow. So you file the claim. They send it to their adjuster and they send you a check for $500 to cover the damage. That's thousands of dollars of damage and they only send you a check for 500 bucks so i call i try to figure out what's going on they say because their adjuster claims that there's no way that all this happened from one incident were you in the car how the f do you know state farm i'm talking to you so now they tell me that i have to file another claim and it's going to be another deductible so if i'm going to pay y'all a thousand dollars i might as well just go get the car fixed myself and then you take it to a place to get a quote and the quote is way cheaper than what state farm was even quoting and what is the point of paying all this money every single month if we still have to pay out of pocket to get the car fixed can someone please explain to me the scammery witchcraft behind these car insurance companies because it's the math is not mathing and it's not making sense you're just better off not having car insurance yes i'm about to be a carless girl what the fuck is going on with the car insurance rates in the United States of America. I just received a text from Geico about an hour ago saying that I owed a bill or was going to be charged $520 on June 8th. $520. I called them. I said, what is this charge for? I'm a little confused. I pay six months for my premium. What is this $520 charge? She said, oh no, that's your new monthly rate. That is your new monthly rate, $520 for car insurance. That is more than the car payment on my lease. How do I cancel? How do I cancel my car insurance? I don't need to drive anymore. $520, I do not drive a luxury vehicle. I'm in a Honda HRV. I am not paying nearly $1,000 a month to be driving on the road in my Honda HRV before gas, before maintenance, before anything else. I already cried about this and I'm done crying about it. My next steps are to call Honda, figure out how I return my lease, pay whatever penalty or whatever else I owe on that, and then cut it loose. Let me tell y'all something. Car insurance specifically is a ripoff. All insurances of any kind, really. But I'm going to specifically talk about car insurance because they're the one that pissing me off the most today. Okay? So... We know the purpose of why we have it. Great. Okay. I understand. All right. Hypothetically, you pay $100 a month. I know nobody's paying now unless, I don't know. I used to pay $77 in Connecticut. I don't know if it's still like that, but we just, for the example, we're going to use $100. So you pay $100 a month. So you pay, what is it? $1,200 a year, right? 
Say you're a person that you've been driving for well over 20 years, you never get into an accident, but you have to have continuous coverage, right? Because if you don't have continuous coverage, you're going to be penalized for that, okay? You don't give me back money for being a great driver, right? And God forbid, God forbid now, say 10 years down the line, I need to now put in a claim. This is, this is hypothetically if you're still with the same company. Now all of a sudden my premium is going to increase the next go around because I had to put in a claim. Although I've been a great driver and never had to call in. You have already taken all the money. You've already taken all the money. And so now because I have to actually use you, I'm being penalized for it. Not to mention, okay, say you're on the market. You have an accident. Cool. Naturally, your rates are going to be higher because you have an accident. The part that doesn't make sense, why do I have a higher rate for an accident that I could not prevent? Meaning, I had no parts. It was not my fault. It could be um, a disaster. It could be a deer decide to run into your car. It could be somebody backing into your car while it's parked in one place. You wasn't even there. You ain't even see it. You had to pull video, all of that. Why am I being penalized for that? I didn't have nothing to do with that. I was not in the vehicle at the time that it happened. So why am I ra- Why is my rate going up because of something that was out of my control? And then they always give you some dumbass answer. Oh, well, you still had to call in for something. So it's still recorded as an accident. You still, you still considered risky, although you had nothing to do with it. Bro, y'all got to do better. Y'all really got to do better. And then some people can't afford insurance because the shit is so freaking high and it's continuing to increase. Even if you're a person that was a good driver and nothing has changed, you've never been in anything. You have been a staple driver. Your insurance premium is still going to go up. Like, how does that make sense? And in a time like this, it it irks me right now because it's like we already dealing with everything else in the world, right? The increase of everything else. And living in some states, you have to have a car. And it's like, how are we living? Car payment is high, insurance high, food high, rent high, high. Like, and if if you can't afford it and you decide to get rid of your insurance, you're going to be penalized for that, too. Like if you decide to get back on or if you get caught by the police. I, I just. These days, I'm feeling like I need to get out of this country. Um, they call it the land of dreams, but right now it's the land of stress and homelessness. Can someone please explain to me why the fuck my car insurance keeps going up? My car insurance has almost doubled from when I started driving three years ago. I'm 19. I started driving when I was 16. When I first started, when I first got my license, I, I was paying $90 for insurance. And now I'm paying $170 a month for liability. Like, I can afford it, yeah, but why is it going up? I have a clean record. I've never had a ticket. I've never gotten into an accident. I've never hit any. I've never hit anyone. I've never been hit by anyone. I have a fully clean record. So why is my insurance going up? I drive an 01 car, an 01 Toyota. So it's not like an expensive car or anything. Like, 170 is still not that much for insurance. I mean, for liability, it seems kind of excessive. I know there's there's a lot. A lot of people out there who are less fortunate than I am who could be getting this same kind of treatment. Like, it doesn't make sense. I just... I don't get it. 805 dollars a month for car insurance listen i sell cars i've been selling cars for almost seven years now so a lot of it i'm numb to car payments numb to uh interest rates i'm numb to credit scores i'm numb to but something i'll never get used to is these car insurance prices yesterday i'm dealing with the client we're looking at a car she likes the car she wants to buy the car car payments are okay approvals okay 
But we called the insurance company, and when we got our first quote at $805 a month, the whole room gasped. I mean the whole room. Myself, the finance manager, the client, all of our mouths dropped. Listen to this. The car that we were insuring was a 2022 Corolla. Just in case you were wondering, the insurance was well over the car payment, like it wasn't even close. After playing around with coverages, changing some deductibles, we were able to get that car insurance rate down to $691. But to anyone that's in the market to buy a new or even pre-owned car, I highly recommend getting an idea of what your car insurance is going to be before you walk into the dealership. What the hell is going on with car insurance lately? I just saw like two or three videos today as I'm scrolling of people saying that they're going to drop their insurance and just probably not drive because their car insurance, no matter where they're getting their quotes from, it's just, it's almost, it's almost more than their car payment. And some people have done the math and realized it might be cheaper just to get an Uber to go wherever they need to go. And some people are brave enough to just say, I'm not going to drive with insurance, period. And none of it makes sense because a lot of the people that are making these videos, such as myself, have never made a claim. They have never been in an accident. Uh, they've never even had a ticket. I've never, I've never used my insurance. The only time I've used my insurance is to like send a letter to my bank to show them that I have insurance. But what really doesn't make sense to me is that if memory serves me correctly, if you do get into an accident and you do make a claim and it is your fault, they're going to raise your premiums way high so high that eventually if you do the math you were paying back the repairs that they paid for and vice versa if the other person is at fault they're going to get the money from that person and that person's going to pay back the money that they paid for for repairs so in essence you're not we're not, you're not paying for anything you're just collecting money to keep us legal on the road almost like it's a subscription based service that we're paying you to drive I have an idea though. How about this? Instead of paying, I don't know, Patrick Mahomes to uh, smile on camera and throw a football wearing a, a whatever Allstate or State Farm shirt, how about we not pay him millions of dollars to do that? Just save your money. I have no idea why these car insurance companies constantly need to make content on something that we legally need. We need the service. You don't have to make a commercial. You don't have to spend $10 million, $20 million on a Super Bowl ad. We need your service. Like, it's an actual law that we have to have it. Save your money, keep it in the bank, and stop raising our rates just to have Tom Brady smile on camera wearing a polo shirt with the company logo on it. We, You don't need to do all that. We're sold on it already. Like, just keep it cheap. Because if you think about it, these car insurance companies are making, they're creating their own problems because it's getting so expensive that uh, people are just gonna start dropping them, not even picking up a new insurance, just drop them, period. And then we get the excuse, the people that actually pay for insurance are gonna hear the excuse, well, the reason why we're raising your rates is because people are driving around without insurance. Gee, I wonder why. Why aren't they driving around without insurance? So I have a little bit of a rant today. It's about car insurance. I feel like car insurance is the biggest scam in the United States. You have to have it according to law and then you pay all this money in for a just in case the just in case happens now they're going to go ahead and raise your rates because that just in case happens that you've been paying for for all these years it's just it's bullshit and i had a little incident i was i scratched this person's vehicle probably about that much and apparently they weren't going to claim it the, uh, my insurance company said it was both of our faults because they were over the lines. And of course, I mean, I should have probably paid more attention and stuff, but anyway, that's beside the point. So they, they told me they weren't going to, there, there was no claim on it or anything like that. Well, then I just got my renewal and apparently they did claim on it. It was like a thousand eighteen dollars for a little scratch. I'm like, there is no way that that cost a thousand eighteen dollars. And they're like, well, if it would have been less than $1,000, then it wouldn't win it against your insurance. I'm like, that's great. So insurance is going up. And so I asked them, I said, do y'all do any kind of like forgiveness like that? Like, it's been years and years and years, like 15 years or something like that. I'm like, nope. I'm like, so all that money that I put in there for this just in case is just, who cares? Like now, now when rates go up, like, yeah. On top of that, they had the VIN number wrong on my truck. They had it as a Lariat which mine's just a little XLT, the bottom of the bottom. 
And apparently my insurance went up because I didn't have the Lariat. I would think that a more expensive truck, your insurance would be higher, but I guess not. I'm, I'm just sick of this. I'm sick of being told what I have to do and stuff and then not being compensated. I feel like if you don't get into a record, you don't use your insurance within the renewal period, you should get something back. Maybe 30% of your, of your, what you paid in something. Sheesh. It's ridiculous. I mean, that shows that you're a good driver. On top of that, I have this little like beacon thing for, um, this drive safe type of thing. I asked them, I said, well, I don't see that on my insurance saying that that's a, a discount. And they're like, yeah, we, we don't know. I'm like, so what do I have this for then? If it's not saving me no money, it's ridiculous. Also got told that the insurance is going up because of, um, inflation too. I'm like, I don't really feel how in inflation involves insurance companies. I guess it's for the, uh, to fix the vehicles. I, I don't, I don't really understand that one either. I'm a little butt hurt. I'm not going to lie. I just got my windshield replaced. I paid a $500 deductible. Great. Insurance covered it. Great. I still paid $500. Like, I don't like it. I don't like it. It doesn't, it doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel right for me to pay you over $500 a month for my insurance. And then for the shop to be like, yeah, insurance is going to cover it. You just have to pay $500 for the deductible. Okay. Here's my rant. And I want to know what anyone else thinks. I got informed, I live in California, I got informed in April that my premium in May was going to be doubled because it's a rule now in California that car insurance premiums double the first month of your premium. And then every month following that for four more months is regular premium, paying off the rest of the, of the amount, the total. And I caught them because I have two cars on my insurance policy and those two cars get paid for out of two different bank accounts and I said my doubled premium is 488 how much of that 488 is for the Toyota and how much of it is for the Nissan and they couldn't tell me and they thought I should have been fine with that answer this is all state like uh, car insurance I was like I have to know and if I'm you can't just double like I'm not accepting that that's just how the system is she said, I can't do it. I can't find that information for you. You need to go back to your insurance broker. Well, I had gone to my insurance broker first and they said they couldn't find that information for me and to call Allstate. So I'm with Allstate and I tell her, I'm not gonna get off the phone with you and go call my insurance broker. I already did that. I will just be calling you back. So where's this information and who do I talk to if you can't get me that in your system? That's wrong. You can't double my premiums and then not tell me how much of each amount is going to what car. No, I have two premiums. She wanted to tell me I had one premium. I have two cars. I have two premiums. I have two different amounts. One's for 700 and something. One's for 600 and something. How much of the premium per month is going to each car? That's what I want to know. I'm very upset about this to think that I should be satisfied just understanding it's all wrapped up into one. No, no, no. And when I did the math, we're missing like around three bucks. Three bucks is not accounted for in that total. So if Allstate does that, they have four million people on their policies nationwide per month. Three dollars just from me. If they did that with every person, that's what, $12 million? $3 is missing. I'm very upset about this. And there's no breakdown. Only numbers on there are the total premium for the six months and the premium per car for the six months, but they cannot show it to me broken down per month. I sent something shady and I'm very upset about this. She escalated my ticket. I told her, look, my problem's not with you. My problem's with your system. I'm not mad at you. I'm mad at the system. I need to talk to someone. If they want to keep me as a client, as a customer, they need to add this feature. They need to make this happen. You should be able to tell me this breakdown. If I go to the grocery store, I have a total for my groceries, but I can see per item everything. If I go to a restaurant, I have a total and I can see what each meal that was ordered cost. 
you all state you gotta do better I'm very angry you need to do better and I want to talk to somebody and I want somebody to tell me my breakdown I want you to figure it out and tell me where the where if I'm mistaken where's that three dollars per month when you go to Europe, the very first difference you see between Europe and America is public transport. The urban planning in Europe is so good that really people don't need to buy cars to go to anywhere. You want to go to hospital, you want to go to work, you can always find a line of bus or train or tram which will take you to wherever you want to go. But the urban planning in the United States is so bad that you just have to depend on a car and i believe it was done intentionally you know because there is so much money to be spent when you own a car first there is taxes there is you know the insurance there is the gas and all that and considering how capitalistic the united states is of course it was done intentionally now that aside about the insurance unfortunately insurance companies are a scam i believe that too and it's been like that for so long it's not something new and unfortunately i feel like it's not going to you know end soon anyway because for it to stop something needs to be done someone has to do something and that someone is the government right and the math is very simple who is the government going to back you know the little guy with a car or the big corporation with money i think the choice is very clear there you will continue paying the insurance money every month but when you do have a problem when the insurance needs to pay you back they will jump all the hoops possible to pay you as less as they can that's just a reality and there is nothing you can do about it except just accepting it i guess so that's what i think and so i would love to hear what you think about this topic i would love to hear your personal stories about car insurance did you ever get scammed by them or do you feel like you ever got scammed by them and uh, yeah thank you very much for watching this video up to here i really appreciate all the support you do to the channel and as always i will see you in my next video so see you